In this composition notebook journal tutorial, I want to begin exploring the different ways that these composition notebooks that you can purchase inexpensively at discount stores can be transformed into something a little more memorable. And if you're like me, it's a little more enjoyable to write something down than to type it on a computer. And I would like to kind of put the wow into the ordinary of these composition journals. I'm going to begin by covering the spine on this inexpensive composition notebook with some fabric that I had in my stash. I have ironed the fabric to remove all of the wrinkles, cut to the height of the journal, and I'm placing it with a mixture of water and glue into place on the spine. Putting the first side into place with the glue wiping off any excess to avoid it sticking to my workplace or to my worksheet that I have underneath here. And now I'm just going to flip that over and glue it on the other side. Notice my, my little soap holder that I'm using for my paintbrushes. That turned out to be a pretty cool little little invention, if you will. So now I'm pulling out my large gel press, some rice paper, and parchment colored paint. And I want to create just a plain background. I'm not looking to over dramatize the cover of this, but I do want just a plain parchment colored background. So I'm going to coat up about four sheets of this rice paper. And as you can see, when I pull that, that's just delivering a real plain background. And now to jazz it up a little bit, I'm going to pull some Distress Oxide inks and just do a light spray over that gel. Press in two colors, Chip Sapphire and Lagoon Blue. And that is going to be the front cover and back cover background. So I'll just coat up a couple of more sheets and we will be off to the races in decorating this book. So there you have it. Two completed. And I'll complete a couple of more. I went ahead and glued the front and back on. I just wrapped it like you would wrap a, a gift, placing the edge up next to and slightly over that fabric. And now to decorate the front. I have an iridescent white ink that I've pulled out grab its white paint, grabbed my smaller gel press and some tissue paper, and I'm just inking or painting in some circles on that tissue. I'm going to go right back over where I painted the first time and paint another set, and I will be coating this entire sheet of tissue paper because why waste it? I have it out. I'll use these circles for other projects as well. So I want to make sure that I'm not um, wasting, I guess. Now that I have allowed that to dry, I'm coming back with some water on a clean paintbrush and just going around the outside edge of those circles so I can tear them out easily. And by wetting that tissue paper, it just comes out very easy right in that cir circular shape that you're looking for. So if you've stuck with me this far, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. And that does help my channel, so I would appreciate it. But let's move on with putting these circles down onto the cover. So I've chosen three of the circles that I like. I'm just cleaning them up a little bit and making sure that I have not a lot of overlap. This tissue paper does dry very clear and you can't see it, but I'm removing as much as I can on the outside edge just to avoid um, anything that might look a little sloppy on the outside edge of the circle when we place it down. I hope I'm making sense. It's making sense to me. I hope it's making sense to you or I'm making sense to you. So I have the three that I have chosen, and I will just 
grab my water and glue combination once again and adhere those to the front cover. Now I have let that water and glue set up on the front cover once I got it into place. So let's go ahead and add our circles. I'm going to put a fine coat down underneath where I want it and then just go from the inside to the outside on each of these circles. And I find that works best because it prevents from tearing or ripping that tissue paper because it is real fine and fragile once you get it down onto the wet surface that you've created by putting that glue and water down first. So here is the third one. We'll get it into place. And there you go. So that needs to dry. I'm going to allow that to dry. There was some dry time in there that you didn't see. But once all of those circles were dried onto the front cover of this booklet, I pulled out the Mod Podge hard coat. I'm going to give the front cover a coat with that. And I will set that aside and allow that to set up and dry. Then I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the back. So while that's drying, I want to create my closure. I'm just going to cut a width that is equal to this fabric because I wanted the closure to have that fabric on it. And I think I'm going to tab it off. And I have a playing card that I have just cut a diagonal on the corner, and that serves as my template for the for the top. I can cut it on one side, flip it over, and cut the other side, and then I know they're symmetrical. I'll glue this fabric into place, and I'm just using a glitter glue to do that. And once I have it down, I will cut the corners. Now, in retrospect, it would have been much easier had I put the rice paper on the back before I put the fabric on. But we've already sailed that ship, so we're going to trim the rice paper down to the size of the back of the back of this tag and then trim it off. And it doesn't have to go all the way down because this I'm going to insert on the back cover and it will hold a string that we can tie that book closed with. So to hold that string, I want to punch a little hole and set an eyelet. So I pulled out my crop a dial, centered up where I want that hole, punched that hole in, and now I'm going to just set that eyelet real fast. And now that closure tab is complete. So I'll open up the back of that book, determine where it should go, glue it down. And I just wanted to make sure that when before I glued it down that it came and lined up with that second circle that we have on the front cover. So it does. And there you go. That closure is complete. And I thought the cover was looking a little plainer. I, I didn't really like the way that it just looked um, kind of rough. Not really rough, but unfinished would be a better word, where the paper met or came slightly over the cloth on the cover. So I decided that this white lace would look nice just as a divider there or just to further decorate that front and back cover. And to cover the inside back and the inside front, I'm utilizing just a, another piece of that rice paper that we decorated at the very beginning. And now I have covered over where that tab comes in. And it is time to put the string in. I measured that string six times the height of the book to give it enough to kind of wrap around a couple of times. I've pulled it through, 
doubled it in half, pulled it through that eyelet, and I pulled the little um, loop through, and I put the little trinket or the, the little charm onto that loop when it was through. And now I've just pulled that tight, tied it to hold it in place, and now you can wrap it and tie that book off. To store that extra cord or that string when you're utilizing the book, I thought a belly band in the back would work because you can tuck that string underneath it. So I'm placing that belly band in the center. Just glue it down on the top and the bottom. I'm going to ink around the outside edge of that, and I'm just using a craft paper for that. I found this nice craft paper that had that kind of parchmenty look to it and some mapping. And once that glitter glue holds, you'll be able to tuck that string underneath that belly band when you're writing in the book. And a pocket in the front would be nice to hold things if you're using this and you're out and about and you have a receipt or something you want to put inside that that you want to incorporate into your book, some place you've been, a ticket, whatever, here's a nice little place to hold it until you are near a glue stick or some glue that you can glue it into the book. See how that string tucks under once that's dry? And now we shall just tie this off into a little bow. And that quite simply completes the transformation of this composition notebook. So I hope you enjoyed this. I am going to do a few more tutorials on how to decorate and different decoration for these because I am getting ready for the holiday and these are going to make nice holiday gifts for my grandchildren, my friends, etc. And it is an inexpensive way to put a very thoughtful gift together. So I hope you will join me in the future videos. If you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell, you'll know when I upload those. I thank you very much for being here and for watching this one. I hope you'll give me that thumbs up to help my channel. And I always enjoy your comments. So I shall say bye for now and hopefully see you on the next tutorial.